Good morning. This is my presentation on combining water and environmental footprint methods for life cycle assessment of run of the river type mini and micro hydropower generation. This is the content of the presentation. Introduction. We know that the environmental impacts of mini hydropower plants is a hot topic in Sri Lanka, especially due to their locations in upstreams within or in very close proximity to undisturbed natural environments. The primary tools used to identify these impacts are EIA and IEE, yet they do not have a major component concerning the impact on water. Meanwhile, water footprint methods exist as a prominent tool in assessing water usage in a variety of consumer products. As for the literature review, this tool of water footprint has been successfully implemented for large-scale hydropower plants fed by major reservoirs, but not for mini or micro hydropower plants. Hence, the usability of existing water footprint methods to assess the impact of mini and micro hydropower plants on water in Sri Lankan context was set as the primary objective of this research. It was expected to expand the research proposing a new water footprint calculation method that suits ROR mini hydropower plants if the existing methods fail. Furthermore, it was intended to incorporate the water footprint method derived into the ecological footprint and then to life cycle assessment to present a complete assessment tool. However, the latter objectives had to be abandoned due to time and resource constraints when carrying out the research and are open for future investigation. Considering the data availability, Sitaogaganga Subbasin was chosen along with Bopekanda, Minavita Oya, and Nakkavita mini hydropower plants to set the scope of the research. Moving on to the methodology, this is a flowchart depicting the steps taken in carrying out the research. The steps followed in setting a definitive scope had to recur several times due to unavailability of data. Selection of Subbasin and mini hydropower plants. As mentioned, the selection of Subbasin and the mini hydropower plants was done based on the availability of meteorological data and mini hydropower plant specific data. The catchments were developed using GIS software with input data from USGS archives, georeferenced images and other open sources. Meanwhile, the mini hydropower plant specific data were extracted from the documents acquired from CEA archives. Meteorological data collection and verification. Meteorological data fields used were rainfall, stream flow and evaporation. The lower boundary of the data period was set by the commissioning date of the latest mini hydropower plant. The daily data were considered because the literature recommendation for water footprint evaluation of non-major hydropower plants was to use either daily or monthly data. Typical data verification processes were followed using single and double mass curves and rainfall stream flow graphs. Coming to the core of the research, the water footprint calculation, as per the literature review, Three water footprint calculation methods were identified as shown here. These three methods have been developed to be used in three different approaches. Gross evaporation method evaluates the volume of evaporation from the water surface per unit energy produced, while the net evaporation method takes the difference between the direct evaporation before and after the construction of the reservoir per unit energy produced. Since the ROR mini hydropower plants do not have major inundations, the second method was deemed redundant. Hence, net operation method was excluded from further calculations. The third method, net water balance method, considers the difference between the direct evaporation and direct precipitation per unit energy produced. Hence, this may yield negative values if the climate is predominantly rainy. Since the data fields needed for water footprint calculations are daily energy production, daily direct precipitation, and daily direct evaporation, they had to be derived from available primary data sources. Daily direct precipitation and daily direct evaporation calculations were straightforward. The rate of evaporation was taken as of Ratnapura gauging station considering the similarity of climate and proximity than the other gauging stations of which the data were available. Rainfall was taken that of Daranikala gauging station since all three hydropower plants were within its thesan polygon. The surface areas were estimated using GIS measurements and data extracted from the documents. In case of daily energy production, the data fields had to be derived using several steps which are to be explained in the following slide. The first step was to estimate the stream flow at the weir location. This was done using the catchments developed using GIS applications and the calibrated HEC HMS model developed for Daranigala Subbasin by my dear colleague Mr. Chamika Punsar. 
Secondly, the turbine and generator characteristics of each mini hydropower plant were extracted from the documents. Using them, the minimum design flow for each mini hydropower plant was estimated using turbine flow efficiency curves for typical turbines of small hydropower plants. Based on the previous two steps, a correlation was derived between the daily stream flow at the weir location and the daily power production. Then it was easily converted into daily energy production. The sample correlation shown here is for a plant with two identical turbine generator units and it is based on several assumptions which are also stated here. So let's take a look at the results and analysis. The water footprint was calculated daily, monthly and annually using gross evaporation and net evaporation methods. When looking at the sample presented here for daily water footprint, you can see that daily energy production hits zero on dry days. Mathematically, water footprint cannot exist on such days. But in reality, water consumption in the form of evaporation occurs nonetheless. Since a major proportion of days in the dry months give no water footprint values, Daily water footprint is unable to capture the true water consumption of mini hydropower plants to a satisfactory level. When looking at the mean monthly water footprint presented here, you can see that it captures the seasonal variations very well. Considering the fact that there were only 9 idle months out of 120 months considered, it captures the water footprint to a satisfactory level as well. When annual water footprint values are considered, it is very apparent that they do not capture the seasonal variation, hence the ROR nature of the mini hydropower plants at all. So this is not suitable for the assessment of the water footprint of ROR type hydropower plants at all. When water footprint 1 and water footprint 3 are compared, we can see that water footprint 3 follows the rainfall variation. but Water footprint 1 presents a uniformity throughout the year depicting a uniform water consumption. As well, considering the predominantly wet climate of the region where water footprint 3 yields negative values, it can be deduced that the water footprint 3 is not suitable to evaluate the given context. The sensitivity analysis was done both quantitatively and qualitatively. Under the quantitative sensitivity analysis, catchment areas of the mini hydropower plants, Water surface areas and the minimum operational efficiencies of the turbines were varied and the corresponding change in the water footprint values were looked at. Mini hydropower plants with smaller areas were much sensitive to both catchment and water surface area variation and the sensitivity of the minimum operational efficiency was complex. This must be due to the nonlinear relationship of the turbine efficiency and the required flow. A number of parameters were considered for the qualitative sensitivity analysis as shown here and the most pressing concern was the discrepancy between the pre-construction and post-construction hydropower plant specific data. Since the research was based on pre-construction data extracted from the documents from the CEA archives, any difference such as the turbine and generator specifications, weir and canal configuration, may significantly alter the results. Finally, concluding the results, out of the methods available for water footprint calculation, mean monthly water footprint captures both the ROR nature and the scale of the hydropower plants the best. Out of the available water footprint methods, the gross evaporation method is the most suitable for ROR mini micro scale hydropower plants. In case of life cycle assessment of the hydropower plants and in case of evaluating hydropower plants not connected to the national grid, grey water footprint also must be incorporated into the water footprint calculation. Water footprint can be used as a tool to quantitatively evaluate the impact of a mini or micro hydropower scheme in instances where qualitative approaches fail, especially in comparison of alternatives located in the same locality. Thank you.